Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for everything. I do not the to your neighbor father we thank you praise be to the Lord from whom all blessings flow your word says do not destroy it for there's a blessing in it thank you because everyone in this place is the recipient of your blessing thank you for our church thank you because you, you every time we gather your word is present you are present your power is present. Thank you for all the testimonies. You are the doer of all these things. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. Thank you for healing our daddy with cancer. Thank you, Lord, for making the joy of your daughter full. Thank you for everything. Thank you for the things that have not been shared that you did. Thank you for everything. We just got to thank you. Father, this morning, we desire and we decree and we demand that nobody here will remain the same. Yeah. In the Old Testament, you said the door you took in should not be the door you take out because you wanted it in such a way that people don't go out the way they came in. Father, in the name of Jesus, let no one remain the same here. We pray for all our churches, the people looking, looking at this service, watching the service from the internet. Pray that nobody will remain the same. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Now do what only you could have done. Amen. Stretch, of, stretch forth your hand to heal the sick. Amen. Raise the dead. Amen. Anything dead in our bodies, raise them up. Amen. Only the tree that my father has planted is allowed to live. Amen. Let there be permanent damage in the kingdom of hell. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now celebrate Jesus. If you celebrate more, you will do more. Amen. Hallelujah. Be seated. God bless you. Love you right back. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 14, amen. <laughs> John 14, verse 16. Please, first timers, don't be offended. That's the way they act here. And I pray the Father, He will give you another helper that He may abide with you forever. Verse 17. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. The KJV says I will not leave you comfortless. But the Greek says I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. 
In James 2 verse 26, the Bible says, it was talking about faith, teaching about faith. But there's a truth there I want us to, to move on with. The Bible says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. There are a lot of Christians that speak in tongues. There are a lot of Christians that struggle a lot of people that come to church that struggle because they've not learned to tap into the help of God. The same way the spirit, the body without the spirit is dead. If your spirit is out of your body, you will lie dead. Now, if, God forbid, if someone is dead, if you put their leg on the side, when you come back in the afternoon, you meet them there. You're trying to make something move. Or is dead. There are dead companies, dead churches, dead marriages. The things that believers are involved with. Maybe you've read Psalm 1 verse 3 before. Say, whatever he leads his hand to do, whatever he does, shall prosper. Why is he not prospering? It's because we've not learned how to tap into the help of God. Help is not something you say casually. Jesus Christ, when he was leaving, he could have left anything behind. He said, I will leave for you a helper. Allos Prakletos, another one of the same type. It will be as if I'm here. Now, when I was in Capernaum, I couldn't be in Jerusalem. This one will be everywhere at the same time. Now, before you came to church, it was in you. You entered your car or a cab, it was inside that cab. When you came to church, it was here before you. It's ubiquitous. It's, it can be everywhere at the same time. The Bible tells us that the, that the devil goes to and fro. He's not everywhere at the same time. He goes to and fro. When it was in tow, it was in the fro. When it was in fro, it was in tow. But the, this helper is everywhere at the same time. Thank God for those who pray on the mountain. There's nothing wrong with that, but you don't have to go to a mountain. Anywhere you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, is there. The place becomes iron. What a helper. I said, what a helper. So a lot of people try to make things happen. But I tell you, I tell you, as a pastor of over two decades, I've been pastoring full-time for 25 years. I can tell you, that you, you, you'll just be struggling, making things up. Some people think, oh, let me dress well. Let me wear another cologne. Let me fake it till I make it. If you're a believer, the enemy will never accept you. Go to clubs, go to lounges, do meetings, pretend to be part of them. There's a mark upon you. You appear upon you the mark of Christ. The devil knows that you're not his. So I don't care how much you try to drink with them, do things with them. It will not work. They will not accept you. They can pretend. I went to the U.S. one day. I have a mentor, or somebody I related with, that was white. Then he asked his black staff, African-American, to drop me at the airport. And you know they talk a lot. He was saying, have you been to his house? I kept quiet. I was like, protocol is not supposed to be talking to me. He said, well, I just want to let you know that these white guys, if they don't invite you to their house, they're just pretending. They don't really love you. So I opened my mouth and I said, I've not only been to his house, I've slept in his house. <laughs> I've not only slept in his house, I have a house that he gave to me in the U.S. So I'm different. When I went back later, the guy was not part of the office anymore. He wasn't there. He was just physically present. His heart was not there. So Jesus said, I will give you a helper. I'm gone. I'm going right now. But one helper, we abide here. That's the reason why we have pastors. That's the reason why we have evangelists. Because he's not seen. So he walks through them. Your pastor is your help. You personally, you have a help. And I'm not talking about spiritual things, business, marriage. 
I don't even know. I'm tired. Yes. There's an enemy stronger than you. God knows that. So he gave you a helper that can plunder him that is stronger than him. When the Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It means they looked at you. They formed something based on your strength, but there's a helper. One um, um, amplified version calls it standby. When Neba or PSCN takes light, what, what does your standby generator do? Kicks off. I have an automatic switcher in my house. So you don't get to know a lot of times when light goes. Because it goes up, pew, then it kicks up, boom, just starts. When it comes, it switches off. That is the way the Holy Ghost is. When your strength is overwhelmed, the Bible says when I'm overwhelmed, it will lead me to a rock higher than I. There's something higher than you. Higher than your education. Higher than your exposure. Higher than your pedigree. The things you've exposed yourself to that should help you. This is not that I'm saying you have to be ordained to have this help. If you're a believer, you can be helped on your secular job. You can be helped with your exams. I went to a school in 1986 and they decided to raid the school. I don't know what came to their mind to raid boys during the exams. The jazz they brought out of boys were up to seven sacks. Then they asked one guy, what is this for? He said, uh, I won't forget anything when I'm writing the exams. The people you are contending with, if you go to a restaurant, I don't know where you grew up, in most places, I don't know if it's in Abuja, or oh, the devil has gone Zani. I heard that uh, Babala was the operator with laptop right now. <laughs> when, you, when you look at the calendar in that restaurant, you, you, you will see a patch, something somebody has buried in the wall. When you, when you want to enter, you see a mark, something they buried there. Nobody's normal. Nobody's normal. You don't serve God. You don't serve the devil. Please tell me after the service, who do you serve? Prayer time. You don't pray. And you don't do jazz. I want to know what you do. Is that you are doing jazz or someone is doing jazz on your behalf? Nobody's normal. I was amazed when they were trying to launch the brand of a car. And they took it to a temple. A new car. If I mention the car, you know it. Some of you drive it. I was amazed on YouTube. I was amazed. What is the correlation between car and a Buddha priest? Nobody's normal. They can wear suit. They can talk. They can speak good English. They can talk well. Nobody's normal. You cannot take over on this earth. Jesus, the ultimate came. The devil said, bow to me. You don't have to go to the cross. I will give you the kingdom of this world and the glory. The ultimate. God became man. The devil came to him. Who are you? The devil will not come to you. Nobody's normal. So if I see that you don't pray, you don't, you don't use the helper, I know what you're using. People may think you're good on social media. People, you can packet things, but I'm telling you, if you don't serve God, there's no gray area. If you don't serve God, you're into something. That is why you see Christians join cults. There are many Christians in some clubs, some because they, they're looking for power. They're looking for a helper. But I'm telling you, and I'm telling you, in, Gen in, in Genesis 4-7, God asks Cain a question in verse 6. Cain, why are you angry? Because Cain knew what to do. But he chose not to do what he was supposed to do. Abel did what he was supposed to do. I don't want to get there. Why has your countenance fallen? Why are you angry? Verse 7, if you do well, Ah, uh, will I not accept you? But if you don't do well, say light at the door. 
If you don't serve God, I'm telling you, one pressure will come. Something will come. That will you will say this one time. Something will happen. If you don't, if you don't do well, sin light at the door. And his desire is to have you, but you should rule over it. Could it be that right now you're doing well, you drive a good car, you have a good job, the desire of sin is to have you? You've said, no, I won't do that. I won't do it. Oh, say, say, say. Okay, where can we catch him? Where can we catch her? What can happen if you don't do well? Sin lies at the door. If you don't pay your tithe in church, you will pay your tithe somewhere else. You may not like what I said, but I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. If you don't pray, you'll be a prey to the devil. If you don't fast, a time is coming, God forbid, trouble will not make you eat. No gray area. Tap your neighbor, say to them, you have help. You need to tap more into it. Hallelujah. Can you imagine a car that the battery is faulty? If you don't be listening, listening close now. I'm getting deep into the message. Can you imagine a car? The battery is not functioning. You say, oh, no big deal, no big deal. Let's tow this car. So you had a car, a twin vehicle to be twin your car, a Bugatti to be twin that car. For a month, you pay them, say, <laughs> for, so that for one month, we are covered. So you get to a, your, your children's school, twin vehicle, pulls a Bugatti. You are listening to music. Boom, 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 boom. Very soon, the music will soon go off. Why? Because the battery cannot work without the engine being on. Now, can the three vehicle run at the at, at full capacity? You wouldn't realize what that car could do to win it. So, if I don't tap into the help of the Holy Spirit, will I get to heaven? Absolutely. But not the way people who tapped into it will get there. Talk to me, somebody. You know, at some point we were in a learning, in a learning church, we were at choir hotels. And many times we would have guests. The protocols, we open the door of the lift. Because probably is lodging at the, is lodged at the highest, highest floor. But the church was at the, at the, at the uh, banquet hall. So after preaching, protocols will follow us, but in honor, they would just allow the two of us to enter the lift and they will walk on the stairs. I mean, Koza was known to have good protocols just to allow pastor to talk to his guest. They would just open the door and run on the stairs. Do you know we get there at the same time? They run. They get there. We meet them in front of the door. What? <laughs> They're part. I just walk out. God bless you. God bless you. But they are panting. So you can get to heaven. But not the same way some people will get there. You can get there defeated. Everyday trouble. Thinking the devil is powerful. Thinking life is difficult. Thinking, oh, no woman, no cry. Thinking, oh, men are bad. Because you didn't use your help. From today, be helped. Amen. All day, every day. Amen. All day, every day. Amen. You will not be limited again. Amen. If you believe it, shout amen, somebody. Amen. What about organizations? You run a company. Every day you're racking your brain. What next should we do? This thing is not working. It's not working. Jesus Christ asked questions when he was alive. But he himself knew what to do. So it's good for you to have a team. What they call leader is not title. To tell them we're going this direction. Oh, I was with the Lord this week and he told us to do this. God just told you, do this. Somebody came uh, many years ago, I think 2008. They told us on Saturday night to leave where we were. And we had a guest from London. So we went to Transcorp Hilton. After that service, they chased us out. 
Then we went to Sheraton for service. After one service, they chiseled out. Then the holy hall we had was in Otaku. The members were going down. Normal, normally, members will come to me, hey, Pastor, how are you? Nice service. They would just greet me from afar. God bless you. Then I knew the devil wanted to wipe our church. God spoke to one guy. He doesn't attend our church. He was a, a deacon in the church. Now he's outside the country. God spoke to him. And he asked me, he said, Pastor Biodon, how much do you need? I heard some people making fun of your church. How much do you need to move? I said, I calculated it. I, I told him. He said, I'll give it to you. God told me to give it to you. I said, what? So I called my associate pastor and my wife. I said, come and hear this. I prayed for him from my heart. He left. Oh, you know, Metro Plaza. We moved there. Beautiful. Did everything. I used to go there to pray every night, all night, just to sleep in the dust. Lord Jesus, supply the needs. Do you know, God told this guy. He was just praying. God just told him to buy land somewhere in town. And don't buy a little land. Buy a lot. So he bought a lot at 40,000. So they came and graded the road next week. Put Nepal poles there. Mm. Boom, he jumped up. To like 500,000. Then they tarred the road. You know, during Jonathan's period, the development was fast. They tarred the road. Boom, he jumped up. He said, Lord, should I sell it? He said, no, 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 no. Wait. I don't want to tell you the amount he jumped in. And it came to me. I was thanking him. He said, no, I should thank you. Look at what happened to me. Then he told me the story. I said, what? Just like that. There's no business on earth anybody could do to make that kind of money. The Holy Spirit wants to help you. He wants to help you, but you are too calculated. You are too distracted. You don't even pray. You don't even study the word. He's talking to you and you don't even listen. You think, yeah, we are the one making things happen. We're the one running things. And you are living under the provision of God. I can give you many examples. Many. Many. I've been pastoring for over two decades. I, I can give you many examples. David said, now I know the Lord save is anointed. Not just any Christian. Anointed. There's a power that follows you. What about raising kids? There's a helper. I'm telling you. Oh, teenagers are difficult. You've not just been helped in that area. Oh, I'm 35, no relationship, and you desire to be married. You need to be helped. In the name of Jesus, from today, you shall be helped all day, every day. Yeah. See, it's not enough for me to prophesy over you. You need to learn how these things work. I wish I had time. I would have given you many examples. From today, struggle has ceased in your life. Can that amen be louder? Can that amen be faith-filled? In the name of Jesus. What you don't know is that what we are contending is not ordinary. You just think, oh, I'm not a pastor, but you're a Christian. Mommy just came off stage now. We just bound the devil. We, we released some forces. Boom! While I was downstairs, I said, Lord Jesus, let angels fill this place. And I know that he hears me. The Bible says we have come to the, to the company of the innumerable angels. That's where we've come. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why I can talk gently. And that kind of miracle will happen. Hallelujah, because I'm not the doer of all these things. Yes, Therefore, whatever you lay your hands on shall prosper. Yes, Maybe you are here, you are thinking, Psalm 92, 14 is not my portion. I'm old, I wish I heard these things when I was young. Moses was 120, it was 80 when God called him. And he lived up to 120. I pray in your old age, you shall still be bearing fruits. Yes. You will bear fruits in the name of Jesus. No time is late for someone that knows God. I pray in the name of Jesus. God will reverse time for you. 
the God that made the moon to stand and the sun to stand will reverse time for you. It will restore the years that you lost. Are you here divorced? It's not your fault, and it may be your fault. But you're a different person right now. I pray in the name of Jesus. The helper will help you. What you are contending with is not ordinary. It's good that you win. Why? Because if you don't win, your kids will struggle with it. Let it end over you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So ordinary effort will not deal with, with things that are extraordinary. Oh, let me do another course. It's good to do courses. Let me travel. It's good to travel. (laughs) <laughs> I had a friend that thought, oh, once I just go to the U.S., they will just roll red carpet. So I, okay, he's been saying it for many years, so we, 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 we helped. He, he went and came back. I said, ah, what happened? So said, you know, be like, I think, oh. <laughs> a lizard here cannot become a crocodile just because you travels. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. Maybe I should come to the people on this side. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, I pray in the name of Jesus. I don't know how to communicate this. You know when people look at you and say, so what's the big deal? It's, the big deal is help. <laughs> you shall be helped. You shall be helped. In the name of Jesus. There are people that will hear bad things about you and help you. Say, ah, No. They can't be talking about this girl like this. There must be something about her. Help. When God helps you, the Bible says God sent David help every day. Till the help he had was like the host of heaven. People that were broke, people that were down. Why are you serving God if you can be helped? There must be something wrong. Maybe you're not catching it. You know, when our first daughter was born, we were living in Quara State in Lorraine. My mother-in-law bought things for her and told me to please uh, go to the Lagos airport that I was going to see the pastor. So she she sent it through the pastor. She was very close to the pastor in the U.S. But you know, I passed by the pastor. I forgot to ask, what does it look like? (laughs) It was when I was at the airport, it was a long time ago, that we didn't have phones, mobile phones in the at the time. So I, I told my friend to please call, keep telling the number, and they were sleeping in the U.S. So when she, oh, the pastor had passed. So he was in town. I collected those things. The pastor cleared those things. If you don't know what you're expecting, the thing will bypass you. Maybe you've been looking for money, and God wants to give you an idea. Some of you are, are expecting money to just, you just wake up and see money under your pillow. And God just wants to give you a relationship that will turn your life. I'm not talking about uh, small, get big God. I'm talking about relationships in business. Are you following what I'm saying? Be helped in the name of Jesus. Are you still here? I said be helped in the name of Jesus. Some of you need to wake up. Counseling cannot help. Dressing nice. Having contacts cannot help. I'm telling you. If you doubt me, keep breathing. Those people who are going through things like that, they know that I know what I'm saying. Oh, we just have to, uh, we have to go for counseling. Things can become worse. (laughs) You know, I, I told someone to take someone I really love to the hospital. Older person. And so the protocol was calling the hospital. Oh, they were coming. Oh, booked the appointment. The person who was talking to them, giving the appointment, so the protocol thought to thank the person. So looks around, where is Mrs. So, 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 so. Oh, she was admitted. So went to the ward to greet her. The person admitting people was admitted. Are you following what I'm saying? The people you are looking up to for help, they need help. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, the one that doesn't need help, the unchanging changer will change your life in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, help! People do things without power from an eye. 
And I'm not talking about ministry alone. Of course, people do ministry without power online. They can go to theology school or Bible school and get the certification and start church, thinking it will work. I went to Kosa, all they had is just AC and screen. <laughs> can AC and screen sustain this? Or the campus? It's not, it's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. Every day the kingdom of darkness is fighting you. Has you on their list. They have you on their list. But in the name of Jesus, they won't be able to catch you. Amen. So you can be ordinary. Get to work. Don't go there with the Bible and be preaching to people. But I'm telling you, understand who you are. Understand what you carry. Understand your mission. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will not be ordinary. Yeah. You remember the seven sons of, of Sceva? They heard, they saw some people cast out devil. And the, the seven of them, I'm sure they were tall. They said, come out in the name of Jesus that Paul preached. So the demon spoke and said, excuse me. Paul I know. Jesus I know. Who are you? They couldn't answer. The demon beat seven people. Have you ever seen me beating in life? Have you been have you been naked in life, wounded, just because you didn't wait to receive power on eye? Pray in the name of Jesus. The last time you are defeated is the last is the is the last time you will be defeated. Yeah. If you believe, you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. What about Moses? Moses. In fact, like I told you before, Moses went to the best school. Moses went to King's school. He was prepped to become the next Pharaoh. He was called Pharaoh's daughter, uh, Pharaoh's daughter's son. People didn't know he was, he was from Israel. They didn't know the story how they picked him from the river. They thought he was an Egyptian. For you to pick a child that you saw on the river. It must be that there's no child in your house. Come on, talk to me. There's a lot of recognition. When you are driving a Mercedes Jeep, all of a sudden, you start noticing everybody driving that car in town. Come on, talk to me. When you start driving a Mazda, you say, after a Mazda, it moves fine. You start noticing people. You can even stop and say, hey, how are you doing? How is your car doing? Why? Because what you lack or what you are dealing with uh, affects what you recognize. If someone like me saw a baby on the river, I will call the police. <laughs> I don't need the child again. Amen? Amen? But someone that doesn't have a child and that can feed a child suddenly took the child home. Even get a nurse to nurse the baby. In Acts 7, Acts 7, I want you to read from verse 22, Acts 7, 22. The Bible says Moses was learned in all wisdom of Egypt, of, of, of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and deeds. So the guy could speak well. The Bible says in verse 23, now when he was 40 years old, please watch this, he came into his heart. Passion. Sometimes it's not permission. One woman came to me and said, my husband is always fasting. Always fasting. I said, for how long? Like a year. My God. Then I called the guy and said, excuse me, pastor. You're just always fasting. He said, ah, the passion for the lost soul. I said, <laughs> before you came, souls were lost. And I'm not saying don't be passionate. But when you break your marriage and destroy everything, your ministry will be destroyed. The people you are going to see, they're the ones that will tell you, Pastor, how come you couldn't manage your home? You'll be shocked. So I counsel them. It came into his heart. Be careful what comes into your heart. Be careful how you manage your calling. How you manage your passion. It came into his heart to visit his brethren. The children of Israel, watch this. See that one of them suffered wrong, he defended and avenged him. 
who was oppressed and struck down the Egyptian, thinking this guy will go and tell the rest that, do you know something? The prince is part of us. He loves us. For he is supposed. Don't live your life based on suppose. This is verse 25. Let's see many versions. We want to look at the word suppose. Are you alive? Yes, sir. Verse 25. Give me a pity. For he supposed. Moses hoped. Give me a new living translation. Moses assumed. Don't live your life on an assumption. He assumed. Uh, give me amplified. Are you alive? He expected. He expected. He thought. He presumed. He presumed that these guys would receive him, would accept him. So which means, you, if you were following what I was reading to you, Moses was learned, was mighty in words, which means your school cannot save you. Yes, sir. Which means your money cannot save you. Your experience cannot save you. He assumed, ah, a whole prince. Did you see my dress? Did you see the protocols that followed me? Did you, have you checked out the school I went to? My alma mater? Alma mater? Have you checked it out? He assumed. One of the things frustrating you now is because of your assumption. Ah, ah I'm a fine girl. Ah, I'm intelligent. I know how to make money. Come on, I don't know. I'm preaching better than your responses to me. <laughs> he assumed. But today, in the name of Jesus, enter into a new realm of help. Amen. Enter into a new realm of help. Amen. You know, when God met Moses, finally, when he was 80 years old, 40 years after, 40 years after, you know what God said to him? What is done in your hand? <laughs> he looked at him and he said, it's just a stick. He said, that is what I will use. And he went to Egypt with a stick. God told him, I know that Pharaoh will never let the people go except by a mighty hand. He's stubborn. I know he's stubborn. But I will help you. I will plague the people. I will do. And I'm telling you, the guy brought 2.5 million people out with their kids, with their animals. They even plundered Egypt with a stick. I would have thought that, oh, God will just send like 1,000 angels. God will tell him, Moses, you know, the training you went through in Egypt, <laughs> is, uh, there's one training. I want to take you to Harvard, okay? Then <laughs> you need money. You need money. How will you eat? Which, where, will, where will you stay? Moses would have put a lot of things, you need this protocol, you need this, 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 uh, this person that will organize you, this is your, uh, your paycheck, this is the phone with which you phone when you need help. No, no police, no God, a stick. Wake up, a stick. Now, if you don't listen to this message very well, you think maybe I'm against school or planning, look around you. See the people I've surrounded myself with. Look around you. This church is excellent. I believe in all those things. But you don't eat icing of a cake. You look at the cake first. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The cake is that you must have a help. After the service, because the reason I'm preaching to you is not for you to say, wow, what a wonderful message. No, it's for impartation. Where you are standing, anywhere you are, in any campus, receive help. Yes. Receive help. Amen. God told him, the devil will not let you go. It takes power. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, as you are indeed with power, you see, the power within you, the power of the Holy Ghost is within you already. What you need is stir. It says, stir up the gift of God that is in you. You see, when that woman, that fries Akara, when she starts, you see the onions, you see pepper. She puts salt, you see everything. And she starts there. What, did, what happens then? They disappear. 
as you stay in the name of Jesus, things will come to the surface. Help is your portion. Help is your portion. People that came out of the same womb with you will wonder how you got here. In the name of Jesus, if you believe it, shout hallelujah. What about Jesus, our Lord, God that became man? How was he endued with power? He traveled from where he was to Jordan. From Galilee to Jordan. He traveled. And he did not start his ministry until that happened to him. And you know, others were being baptized. He, he lined up for them to be baptized. The moment Jesus got into water, I began to pray. Heaven opened and the Father spoke. So what happened after? The Holy Ghost drove him into the wilderness immediately for 40 days. The word drive. Give me KJV. I, I, the word led is not correct. Oh, uh, Look for the version that says drive. That's what the Greek says. He was driven. Oh yeah? Quickly, quickly. Because you can't do this work. You can't do anything without power. After this service, somebody will be driven into fasting. Yeah. After this service, somebody will be driven into something that will, that will end the frustration in your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. If you believe it, shout amen like fire. Yeah. Now, if you're not getting what I'm saying. Have you read about the conversion of Apostle Paul? He was called Saul before. In Acts chapter 9. Oh, his conversion was miraculous. He saw the, the heaven open. He saw Jesus. He went blind. Jesus spoke. He fell down. The guy that was going to take certification to kill all Christians. He fell down. It was miraculous. In those days, when someone had a miraculous conversion, we say his conversion was like source conversion. Miraculous. But that guy did not enter into what. In fact, immediately he said, Lord, what, you, what would you have me do? God told him, I want you to go here. I want you to do this. But he couldn't move until a man called Ananias came to introduce help to him. He laid hands on him. First of all, scales fell from his eyes. Number two, that guy began to operate. So I'm not talking about an encounter, uh, the way you were born again, maybe even water baptism. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about an encounter with the Holy Ghost. And some of us have encounter with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is in us to abide forever. But some of us have ignored that help. We go to Egypt for help and woe to them that go to Egypt for help. We lie. We manipulate. We talk people down so that we can be up. I've never seen a place where they, they say these building materials, we, with these blocks, we broke down a house and we are selling it for you to build. That house will not stand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All those methods are Egyptian methods. Jesus said, among you shall not be so. Because among the Gentiles, they lord it over those they, they, they lead. But among you, it shall not be so. If whoever wants to be on top, should serve. Should serve. The kingdom of God is antithesis to every single thing that the world does. I pray in the name of Jesus that help will be your portion. Help will be your portion. In Acts chapter 6, verse 2. Are you getting something? I'm going to drop it very soon. I'm just trying to build the foundation. Somebody shout help. help. Are you alive? Shout help. help. Now, the Bible says the church increased. Increase can be storm, can be problem. In fact, most of the people going through problem right now is because of increase. Now that your husband is richer, he's bolder. You fight more. Come on, talk to me. I think they don't like me on this side now. I don't even know where to move to. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? Before you had a baby, no problem. But now, you go to house up for your wife, but she still wants you to carry the baby after working hard at work. Storms come sometimes after increase. If you respond to me more, I will preach more. 
In Acts chapter 6 verse 1, the Bible says in verse 1, now in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying, it wasn't that, they, they, they had problems. So sometimes in scarcity you need help. Sometimes in plenty you need help. There arose complain from the Hellenists. Who are the Hellenists? Gentile people that got born again. They are the Hellenists. Because they are widows. There was tribalism also. So when people saw Jews, they gave them two spoons. They saw Gentiles, they gave them one spoon. Ah, so there's complaint. We are the Holy Ghost though, but we don't like this. In the daily distribution, verse 2. The Bible says in verse 2, then the 12 summoned the multitude. Who knows what, was, what, what the devil was planning? He wanted them to respond to the need. Don't respond to need. Do what God has asked you to do. The 12 summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word. The devil wants us to leave the word and serve tables. In verse 3, therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation. Those who dress well. Those who their tithe is high. Come on, talk to me. Those that speak well. Those who are full of the Holy Ghost. Why? Why is it that they have to search? Come on, talk to me. Why is it that they have to search? Because not everybody in the church is full of the Holy Ghost. The Father, you say, Ah, preach, preacher, does not mean you are full of the Holy Ghost. This fact that you speak in tongues after you heard, oh, Rabba Kasatara, good word, does not mean you are full of the Holy Ghost. What a message. I don't even know where to turn. The fact that you've been in church for a long time does not mean you are full of the Holy Ghost. Search from among you. Brethren, they were born again. All of them were born again. Help is on different levels. And we can appoint to this business. In Acts 19, Acts 19, Paul saw some people, they were born again. And they understood the baptism of, 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 the, of John the Baptist. And he asked them a question. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? How do you operate? There are many people that, you know, listen to doctrines of demons. You see, when you see a small boy carry guns with bullets, if he tells you, sit down, what will you do? You sit down. When he tells you, stand up, what will you do? You stand up. If he doesn't carry anything, he tells you, sit down, you say, are you mad? <laughs> That's the difference between Christians with the Holy Ghost and Christians that don't have Holy Ghost. I just want to make this thing simple. So maybe you are sitting here, you've been born again for a long time, you attended a church because people are preach denomination. And they say, no, no, the Holy Ghost has come and gone. The days of the Holy Ghost has gone. No, it's not true. You can't be a successful Christian on earth with the devil being there if you're not in deep with power. Now, there are people that would say they would not even receive the Holy Ghost. But you know the worst thing? You have the Holy Ghost. There are people with the Holy Ghost within them. They're not tapping into the hell. When last did you pray in tongues for one hour? When last did you allow the Holy Ghost to talk to you? When last did it guide your discretion? When last? Say, Lord Jesus, I've served you, my life. What do you call service? When you need a helper. They work. Human beings cannot do it. You can't do the things of the spirit in the energy of the flesh. You are cocky this morning because of your training. Maybe you are a medical doctor. Maybe you are, you are a consultant. Maybe you are, you are, you are all, the, all of that cannot do this work. The, that's why you open people up in the theater. You don't see demons. Do you see demons? <laughs> wake up, wake up, wake up. You know, it sounds like maybe I'm, I'm passionate about what I'm saying and I'm saying things out of, no, I plan to say this. According to one of my pastors, they were casting demon out in London. <laughs> one of the 
the deliverance patient spoke a great language. Say, ah. The Nigerian said, ah, a white person speaking a great language? Ah, the demon said, we don't need visa, we're here. <laughs> well, that's why when you cut people, you don't see uh, demons. Have you seen soul before? Never. Have you seen spirit before? Never. But they exist. Man is trapezoid. Spirit is a spirit being. He has a soul. He has a spirit. Which means there's a knowledge that is epi beyond what you learned in school. So sit down. You're not uh, a professor in the spirit. You're a professor in what you do. And don't think the devil will educate you to the point that he will teach you to defeat him. Wake up. David walked in the Holy Ghost. I don't know. This morning I was meditating. Quiet, guys. What kind of spirit did David carry? That he, he, he didn't know, he didn't even sing. He played harp and a demon left. What kind of spirit is that? Receive it in the name of Jesus. You know the funny thing? You have the Holy Ghost within you. But I'm teaching you this morning to tap into the help you have. Because all those things you focus on, let's do marketing, let's do this, present yourself well, or talk well, pronounce your lyrics well, it's good. But I'm telling you, I know people that stand on a spot and they taught the world on a spot. They don't have stigmanship, they don't have anything. I pray in the name of Jesus that you not only enter into what I'm saying, you will understand what I'm saying. Because it cannot be taught. You need to wake up and know that there's more. I pray in the name of Jesus, may you enter into more. In Psalm 89 verse 20, Psalm 89 verse 20, Psalm 89 verse 20, I have found my servant David with what? My holy oil, I have anointed him. Now, Oil represented the Holy Ghost in the Old Testament. Now you have the Holy Ghost. Can you imagine if, if uh, there's a church we started maybe in Enugu? They saw my videos. They saw my picture. And I'm here physically. And they're still looking at my picture. Something's wrong. <laughs> like the last time I was in the lorry, there were children that they gave birth to. Growing up, I didn't go to Ilorin. So when they saw me, you know what I told them? I said, hey, because I decided to greet everybody in the church, including children. So when the children came to me, I said, hey, how are you doing? I'm Pastor Bearden. They were excited because they used to see me on the, on the TV. And you know what I told them? I said, I just came out of the screen to talk to you. <laughs> and some of them believed. They were like, wow. You know, when I was in church, they were in the children's church. So after church, they came out. I said, I just stepped out of the screen to say hello to you. Some of them believed, some of them felt, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have found my servant David with my holy oil, and I have anointed him, verse 2, and verse 21, with whom my hand shall be established. Be why would my hand be established upon him? Because... It carries help. Come on, talk to me. Also, my arm shall strengthen him. Why? Because he carries help. Was he the only one that lived in his gener generation? He was hungry one day. He went to eat the food of the priest and nothing happened to him. Go and try it. Even the, the, the head priest was shocked that David ate the bread of the priest and nothing happened to him. Why? Anoint help. Verse 22. The enemy shall not outwit him. What did he do? He just had help. No, the sons of wickedness afflict him. Verse 23. I will beat down his foes before his face. I will plead those who hate him. 25. But my faithfulness and mercy shall be with him and in my name his honor shall be exalted. What did he do? He just had the anointing. Also, I will set his hand over the sea and his right hand over the river, my God. He shall cry to me, you are my father, my God. But 
When he calls, I answer. Pew. When he says, be healed, it's done. Angels need to move. Come on, talk to me. Why? Favor by the oil, by the, by the Holy Ghost. Receive help. Amen. You're not saying amen like you are preached to. Amen. Say amen like you have a revelation. Amen. Psalm 92 verse 10. My own, but my own. I wish I could read to you from the beginning. But means zero. What is happening, my case is different. Yes, but my own, shall, 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 my own, you have exalted like a wild ox or the one of a unicorn. I have been anointed with, look at it, with fresh one. He's a new one. Okay? That's why you have to acknowledge the helper. Because the oil last year cannot work for, for the assignment this year. Fresh oil. I pray for you in my heart, from my heart. Receive fresh oil. I recommend that you read the book of Kenneth Hagin on fresh oil. I recommend. You can write it down. Those are books you should read on fresh oil. In the name of Jesus, receive fresh oil. Amen. Do you know even when David sinned in Psalm 51 verse 11, his bother was, do not cast me away from your presence. Don't take the Holy Spirit. Don't, ah, who am I without the help? Don't take the Holy Spirit from me. Now your case is not like this because the Holy Ghost is with you forever. In the Old Testament, he visits you know, he came on Samson when he did it. There was a time Samson shook. The Holy Ghost was on there. But you can grieve the Holy Spirit. You can quench the Holy Spirit. That is what is happening to many people right now. They've quenched the oppression of the Holy Spirit. They've quenched their help. We're seeing. Some of you lie. Some of you uh, sleep in houses that you're not supposed to sleep. Some of you go to places you're not supposed to go. Some of you drink what you're not supposed to drink. Some say when he was anointed, one of the things they told him not to do, don't take strong drinks. There are some things you must not do. They are your personal instructions. They are not, all things are lawful for you in the New Testament. Not all things are gainful. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, what will stop the favor of God and the help of God in your life, you not do it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He said, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. In Mark 16 verse 17, I'm rounding off. Mark 16 verse 17. The Bible says in Mark 16, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out devil. Ekbalo is the Greek word. It means to take a rat by the tail and fling the rat out. That's what God budgets for you to do to demons. And when we talk about demons, I'm not talking about uh, 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 a demon with two horns. I'm talking about poverty. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm talking about sickness. Yes, sir. I'm talking about infirmity. Yes, sir. I'm talking about uh, 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 stagnation. Yes, In my name, you will cast out devil. They will speak with new tongues. Now, this does not come out very well. Let's read from verse 17, the Amplified Version. Amplified. These are the attesting signs. Say this after me. These are the attesting signs. <laughs> Have you filled an attestation card before? You are saying I'm the one in the picture. So when you hear this sign shall follow, it doesn't mean you're walking and one sign is following you. No, this is how you know Christians. Come and talk to me. These guys, they will drive out demons. Do you know how many Christians today, they are driving out demons from them every month. Come for a checkup next month. So we've done this month to come. It's not, it's, it's not scriptural. There is something going on. Remember, these things can already respond to English. These things don't, they, what some people are fighting, in fact, what we are fighting is, is, not, is not natural. So you can cast it out by, oh yeah, my contacts, my, my, no, those things don't work. I asked somebody in church here, he was living in the house of number three man in the country and he didn't have help. He was living there. That was his uncle. If God does not help you, where will you get help? Talk to me, somebody. These are the attesting signs that we accompany those who believe, not pastors. If you are a believer, shout hallelujah. 
In my name, they will drive out devils. What will happen is that they will speak in new languages. My God. In verse 18, the Bible says they will pick up serpents. Serpents will not pick them up. They are the ones that start the trouble. They will pick up serpents. Even if they, if not, they will. If, because you're not supposed to drink poison. But if, your discernment is supposed to be working. That, mm, don't eat that food. No, don't take it. Don't eat here. When you get to your, don't, don't eat. But if they eat poison, it will not work. It will not hurt them. They will lay hands. Will, not if. They will lay hands on the sick. And they will get well. When you lay hands on the sick from today, expect the sick to get well. In verse 19, the Bible says, no, go to verse 18. They will pick up serpents, and if they drink deadly things or anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and the sick will get well. That will be your story. In Luke 24, verse 49. Luke 24, 49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But please don't go yet. Tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from one eye. What makes you think you start that business without locking up? Read the books of satanists that repented. Some of them going to go to sleep in the grave for, for seven days. Even the devil will not empower them. They pay terrible prices. I, I listened to a testimony of a woman that claimed that it was a, she was a witch before she gave her life to Christ. They used to fast for 100 days. Prayer meeting, scanty. Concert, everywhere is full. I'm not against it. But please, don't ever say, Lord, I've saved you. With what? With what? They saw Muhammad Ali jogging early in the morning. He said, Muhammad Ali, do you want to, do you like cold? He said, no. But I like to be a champion. If you want to win, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's time to tap, to start doing some things. You are, you are too comfortable with failure. You are too comfortable with poverty. You are too, you are, you are beginning to, you are beginning to manage it like it's your life but is not concurrent with what the Word of God says about you. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, enjoy power. Amen. Enjoy help. Amen. Walk in the strength of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. in John 14, John 14 verse 16, I want to read from 16 to 18. I will pray the Father. I will pray the Father. And it will give you another helper. Therefore, enjoy help. Amen. Enjoy help. Amen. For those of you that are born again, you have the help already. Enjoy the help. Amen. I pray you will not be stagnated anymore. Amen. Stagnation is not your portion anymore. Amen. Every problem somebody is having in their business ends today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says in the Old Testament, you shall hear a voice behind you, tell you telling you, go this way. It's not only behind you, within you. You shall hear a voice this week. Amen. God will help you. Amen. Another helper. Amen. That, you may, that, we, he will, uh, I, that he may abide with you, not for some time. Not like Samson. Forever. Not like David. That he has to plead with God. Don't take the Holy Spirit from me. No, right now the Holy Spirit Maybe you gave your life to Christ when you were in secondary school and you went back. You went left. The Holy Ghost abides with you. For how? Forever. But you can quench the Spirit. You can grieve the Spirit. You can despise prophesy. You can go left. It's possible your mind has wandered. But the Holy Ghost abides with you forever. He can turn from you. All you need to do today is to say, Jesus, let the Holy Ghost turn back to me. In James chapter 4, verse 8, I want to read that to you before I come here. I'm reading to verse 18. James chapter 4, verse 8. He said, draw near to God. You are the one to start it. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hand, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Are you double-minded in this place? In one hand, you love the world. In one hand, you need help. No, 
you're going to have to help us. You can't serve God and mammon. Is that you love one and hate the other, or hate one and love the, one, the other. Listen to me. God wants to help you. God wants to take you to height. It is not the route you are taking that is the route to help. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, everything the enemy has done to win in your life ends today. Amen. Ends today. Amen. In John 14, 16, that I told you to turn into, I will, he said, I will pray the Father. He will give you another helper that he may abide with you for how long? Amen. Never forget this. That he may abide with you for how long? Amen. This spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. If you're not born again, you cannot receive this. Listen to me. There was one guy that was following Apostle Paul. And he was so, oh, Peter, sorry. He was so, he was so tripped. Oh, that guy was a believer. <laughs> yes, he was a sorcerer. He encountered water baptism. He did not see anything. Because to be a believer, you had to die and rise with the baptism. So they baptized everybody. Remember when the Tupi Enoch was saved? What did Philip do? Baptize. He said, there's water here. What is stopping me from being baptized? In Acts of the 10, in the house of Colinius, when the Holy Ghost fell, you know what Peter said? He said, what is withholding these Gentiles from being baptized? So baptism of water is the first thing they do. The next thing they do is baptism of the Holy Spirit. They help. Once you, you, you have that, everything I'm telling you begins to run. You see, for 10 days, the apostles were in the upper room. Mary, the mother of Jesus. They were women there. They locked themselves up for 10 days. Jesus told them, don't go. You can't. Don't go until you're endued with power. Because blows you are not prepared for will land on your face. Don't go. But the devil knows when you have the power, he can't try you. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, let there be a restoration in your marriage. Amen. Let there be a restoration in your office. Amen. Everything that was difficult becomes easy right now. Amen. That thing that is hanging, let it drop right now. Amen. May the helper help you. Amen. The Bible says the spirit of truth, verse 17, John 14. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive is not possible. The sorcerer brought money and said, please, please. Eh? When he saw the way the Holy Ghost was operating, he said, eh? Peter, take money. Peter said, may your money perish. Do you think you can buy the gift of God? It's a gift. Don't name. What do you do to, do to gift? You take a gift. You don't pray for a gift. You take a gift. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, everyone under the sound of my voice, you will not be ordinary. <laughs> Your result will not be ordinary. Amen. Can you imagine if all of us here and those who are watching me on the TV, they tap into the help of the Holy Ghost. Can you imagine how our results will be? Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I say you will not be ordinary. Amen. Over your children, over your husband, over your wife, on your business, you will not be ordinary. Amen. Now let your eyes be open. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. let your mind be open. Amen. Let God anoint you afresh. Amen. Receive fresh oil. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I would say the world cannot receive it because it neither, come on, give it to me, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. Say to your neighbor, say, but you know him. You know him. He dwells. The word dwell is may know. He abides within you. I will be in you. Verse 18, I will not leave you with that problem, with that circumstance. I will not leave you. I will attend to you. But another helper is with you. He's holy. He's a spirit. What's his name? Jesus. He's not the same person. But remember the, the, the parable of, of, uh, of, of, of the man that was left half dead, the good Samaritan. He first of all took him to an inn and poured oil and wine. That oil and wine is the Holy Ghost. And he paid him two denarii. You know that a dinner, a, a dinner is, is, is what you get for a day. Two denarii means 2,000. 
Because a day in the eyes of the Lord is a, like a thousand years. Come on, talk to me. Yes, he said, when I come back, you've been paid. Somebody has been paid to help you. Yes, Why are you abandoning the help? When you hear that Jesus has paid the price, to who? To the devil? No. To the Holy Ghost. He's holy. He's not supposed to be here. The price has been paid to help you. Why are you abandoning him? Why are you walking in your strength? Why? Why don't you pray? Why don't you fast? Why do you visit that place where the cross is upside down just to get help? You know, I can just imagine if somebody tricked me to a place where I would just look like, if I lay hands on that one, it will, it will be slain under the spirit. I'm telling you. Because you can't know what I know and go to those kind of places. I pray in the name of Jesus, let your mind be open. You are not a victim. You are a victor. We are more than conquerors. Not alone. Through him. Okay? Through him. I can do all things. Philippians 4.13. Through what? Through Christ. I love the Amplified of Philippians 4.13. He said, I have strength for all things. In Christ who empowers me. I'm ready for anything. Equal to anything. Through him who infuses me. With inner strength. I'm self-sufficient in Christ's sufficient. Now you may think, oh, it's Christ. No. Christ paid the Holy Ghost to be in everybody. Come on, talk to me. I say you'll not be ordinary. Amen. That amen is not correct. Amen. Say amen like you want to receive something in. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now let this Moses break out from this mess. Everything you do this week shall prosper. Amen. You will do well. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now before I bless everybody because the world cannot receive this thing we are talking about. You are here or you are in any of our churches. You are not born again. Listen to me. Big boys sometimes, they form big boys having big problems. I've been there. You're not a man because you have muscles. You're a man because you heard something and you know I ought to go in this direction because I know that the enemy has done some things that makes you take three steps forward and you go ten steps backward. You want that to stop in your life because the world cannot receive this help. If that's you, you sense in your spirit that today, not today, today is the day of salvation for me. If that's you. Or maybe you've been born again before you went back and you grieved the Holy Spirit. I don't know where you went. I don't know what you did. I'm not just summonizing. I came here prepared that God should use me for you. If that's you, come here. I want to pray for you. Keep coming. Don't wait for the first person. You can be the first person. Remember the pool of Siloam, the first person to jump inside. But this is not the pool of Siloam. I'm telling you, he's able. He's more than able. Take that bold step. Come. Come, come, come. Take that bold step. Don't listen to the lie of the devil that says, oh, when I get home, I will do it. No, come now. Now. I am your own. Till the day you will come. Come, 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 come. You are my everything. Come on, sing that song. You are my standard. Till the day you will come, oh Lord. You are my everything. Jesus, you are my standard. Till the day you will come, oh Lord Jesus, I am your home. There's no one like you. I am your home. Till the day you will come, oh Lord Jesus, I am your home. You are listening to me on the TV or you're watching from any of our churches. I want you to know that the morale behind Christianity 
The reason why you should come to church is what they call fellowship of the Holy Ghost. That's one thing the enemy wants to tamper with. Anything he's tempting you with, anything he wants to give to you outside God, he wants to break that fellowship. If you can be one with the Holy Ghost, there's nothing you can do. Have a sports, principles, and powers. He made an open spectacle of them. I'm telling you, you are too young to go through what you're going through. That marriage can be saved. That company can be saved. That infirmity can go. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of all. Today is your day of deliverance. Let your heart be set, be expectant. Now I'm going to lead these people to Christ and all of us will start praying in tongues, including those who couldn't pray in tongues before. Let your heart be set in all the churches. Nobody will lay hands on anybody. I've really received the Holy Ghost since you believed. When you get to heaven, you will find out that it's yours already. You just did it. Somebody just talked you out of it. If you are the devil, how will you stop you? You look at what is, is, is available to him that can stop you. You make sure he hates it. You make sure he doesn't tap into it. You can talk for one hour, but you can pray in tongues for one hour. Why? 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 There's something about it. Some of you don't even know why you sleep when you're studying the Bible. If they keep a bed here after the service and they say, come, go, come and sleep, you won't be able to sleep. There's something the devil wants to achieve. But that thing has ended in your life today. Amen. Today become the first day of the rest of your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Now, those of us in front, let me tell you the way it works. There is no cult you can join, you have to say. There's nothing you have to say. Your mouth can save you, your mouth can judge you. So, anybody that calls you for auto call and you don't talk, you just return the same way. But when you talk and you mean what you're saying in your heart, the devil knows he can't touch you anymore. You now have the right to help. Ah, but I know Christians that are struggling. I'm telling you, forget about them. You start your, you'll be shocked how God will lift you high. When you have help, you have help. Yes, sir. Yes, and I pray that in the name of Jesus, today becomes the first day of the rest of your life. Amen. Let all of us join them. Say after me, Father, in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. That's not everybody. Say again, say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. I heard your word. And I believe you are. Today, I confess Jesus as my Lord and as my Savior. I believe He came. I believe He died. I believe that on the third day, He was raised from the dead. Therefore, everything He did by His death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, I receive today into my heart. I'm born again. Holy Spirit, come and live in me. Holy Spirit, come and help me. I give you the permission to help me. From today, I'm born again. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a mighty hand. Now, you would have expected that I told you, confess your sins. Unbelievers don't confess their sins. How many will you remember? You confess Jesus as Lord. But the believers... According to 1 John 1, 9, you confess your sins if, you, if you're a believer. Anything you did wrong, the Holy Spirit will tell you that you confess it. So I want to give one minute to everybody. Just plead the blood of Jesus on yourself. Everybody, plead the blood of Jesus because you're about to receive something. I'm, I, don't, I don't want theatrics. You don't have to fall down. No, I want something that will come upon your life and the devil will know that God has become your light and your salvation. Are you murmuring or praying? Are you expectant? Make it louder. Make it louder. Let faith be obvious in your prayer. Pray in tongues. Appreciate Him. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Now, everybody look at me in front because I'm bothered about you. 
When I tell you receive the Holy Ghost, I'm not the one that wants to give you. It is what the Father, and Jesus promised that the Father will give to you. It's not a man that is your lie. It's not like men that will promise to be and fail. He is always true. Okay? Then, I have been a pastor for a while. When I say, receive the Holy Ghost, somebody says, I receive, I receive. I, no, no, no. When I say receive, you just start saying what you want. You know, you have a little cousin, a little niece, a little nephew. When they start speaking, his words may not be together. Receive the Holy Ghost. Say, I receive the, say by faith and open your, don't open your mouth like that. You, you, you take steps by faith and the Holy Ghost will carry you. It's just like you see a seller selling something. He said, put this in my head. <laughs> Does it work that way? No. The person will put his hand or hand and say, please, put this on my head. Then you help. Okay? He's a helper. Help means you are doing something. Then he helps you. He doesn't start it. You start it, then he helps you. Okay? Is it clear enough? Okay, Father, thank you. Very simple, very simple. You don't pray for a gift. You receive a gift. Father, thank you. Come on, thank him. You thank, you thank someone for a gift. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Thank him, thank him. Thank you, thank him. Yeshua, Hamashiach, Lion of Judah, Agrim Yeshua, Thank you, Jesus. Lion of Judah. Thank you, Jesus. She not ever can sat on her. Lion of Judah. Two more times. Yeshua. Yakara Baba Baka Sata. Thank you, Jesus. I Maybe you're here, you're watching what will happen. If you are a watcher, you will never see. If you're an onlooker, you will never see anything. Receive the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Now open your mouth and pray. Receive. Receive. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Pray. Come on, come on, come on, pray. It's on you. Say, I receive the Holy Ghost and begin to pray. It's on you. It's on you. No man can come to the Father except the Father, the Holy Ghost draws him. He's on you. He's in you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That is it. That is it. You're doing well. Come on. Come on. All over this place. At the foyer. In the churches. Praying tongues. That thing, the foundation must give way today. Add passion. Add passion. When you start, you are conscious. Have passion. That's it. That's it. That's it. If you don't try, it won't help. Open your mouth. If you have to repeat the same line, go ahead. That's the way it starts. That's it. That's it. That's it. Go open your mouth. Don't think something will come on you. Open your mouth and speak. Speak. Speak, and the Holy Ghost will help you. I will not just. It's working. It's working. 
Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Speak. Yes, that's it. Be bold. Yes, that's it. Be bold. Yes, you're doing well. That's it. In all the churches, receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Not just praying in tongues, the power of the Holy Ghost. Keshata Raba, Epankedia, Lakaraba Kasa, Keshata Raba Baba. Come on, pray in pictures right now. Pray in pictures right now. I can hear you. Make it loud. Bury everything that is not of God. Bury sicknesses. Bury poverty. Bury bad luck. In the name of Jesus. Let good come to you. That's it. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Thank you, Jesus. In the house of Colinius, Peter did not lay hands on them. The Holy Ghost fell. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, enter into the new realm of help. Some people believe in theatrics. I believe in the supernatural. It doesn't have to be spectacular, but from that day, you see that the power of sin, we have testimonies here, I just gave my life to Christ here and I, I, I didn't have the urge to smoke again. I didn't have the urge to do this again. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. It cannot be done by you determining. No, it's God that will help you. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. Therefore, for everyone that has faith, enter into the new realm of help. Be helped in the city. Be helped in the field. Be helped when you go out. Be helped when you come in. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That problem at work, let the Holy Ghost solve it. Receive the wisdom. Know what to do. In the name of Jesus. That problem in your marriage, in the name of Jesus, the Lord will teach you himself. In the name of Jesus, you know what to do. In the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus, there shall be testimonies of help. In all the churches, so shall it be. In Jesus' name. Now, do one thing, give thanks. Now, you need to know that the hand with which we receive in the kingdom is thanksgiving. What you don't have in your life are things you not thank God for. Come on, thank God. Appreciate Him. Appreciate Him. Appreciate Him. Appreciate it. Sing that song for me. Captain of our destiny. The captain of my destiny. In you alone. In you
as you leave this place, God goes with you. Yeah. Sicknesses disappears from your body. Yeah. Every single day from now, begin to improve. Yeah. You'll get better. Yeah. You'll get better. Yeah. You'll get better. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yeah. God will help you. Yeah. This week is blessed. Yeah. This week is blessed. Yeah. Everything you lay on hands will prosper. Yeah. God will help you. Amen. People around you will marvel Amen. how you've been helped. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That thing you are going through will not turn out the way your adversary thought it would turn out. Amen. When everything settles, you and God alone will be standing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God will help you. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' precious name.